If you've been waiting for some of the new features that came out in VS Code's release notes, 1.107, it is here. Let's go ahead and take a look at some. We now have one place to manage all your ages, and that's in our chat view. So if I click show all sessions here, you could take a quick glance at your background sessions, your cloud sessions, here's one from Codex, and of course your local sessions. There's even a side panel here that you could expand in order to have more real estate. And what's nice is that we can use multiple agents at once. So for example, if I wanted to go into a planning agent and then ask to create a plan to develop a simple game inspired by Pac-Man. When I start this, while it continues working, I don't need to stay and wait. I can actually go and ask it to do something else. So maybe I could ask it to plan unit tests for this project. And before I could even execute it, you could see on the top right hand corner here, the progress of my initial request. And for this one right here, I could either execute it or even choose to delegate whether I want it to go into the cloud agent or background agent. Cloud agents run on a remote cloud infrastructure and can run tasks, create branches, and interact with repos. Background agents can be ran in the current workspace or in a dedicated Git work tree. Using a work tree automatically isolates the agent's changes in a separate folder, allowing multiple agents to run at the same time without conflicts. More details are in our release notes here. As the number of your sessions increase, at the very top, you do have the option to filter to have control of what sessions you want to see, and also even search, which makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. For a deeper dive into this unified experience, check out this video here. With this release in VS Code, we now have the Language Models Editor which is used to handle a lot of different models, which can become a headache. And by clicking Manage Models from our Models Picker here, you can manage all your models and see lots of details regarding it, including the model name, context size, capabilities. For example, within our menu here, we have GPT-5.1 Codex that is visible. If we wanted to hide that, all we need to do is come on over here and click on this eye icon, and now it's no longer visible. Above, within search, you can easily find the different models that you want by filtering. And you even have the option to add more models by clicking Add Models, which will show you a drop-down list of all installed model providers. We continue to improve the inline chat experience to align it with the other chat experiences in VS Code and to optimize it for quick single line code changes. This release brings us rename suggestions for TypeScript. Rename suggestions predict when a symbol rename should happen instead of a regular text suggestion. When predicted, an additional indicator is shown together with the normal textual edit. You could then apply the symbol rename by using Shift plus Tab. In this demonstration here, property A is renamed to Width. The rename suggestion then suggests to rename B to Height, as well as rename the two parameters A and B accordingly. This feature is currently rolled out to our user base using an experiment and is only available for TypeScript for now. However, support for other languages is planned. We've also made several improvements to the chat view's appearance. When you now open the chat, a new title control appears to the top, showing you the title of the chat, as well as giving you a way back. You can configure this behavior under Settings by searching for Chat View Title. In this release, you can now reuse Claude skills in VS Code. This is an experimental feature and you can enable it by turning on the chat.useClaudeSkills setting. Claude skills are essentially reusable instructions written in Markdown. Here I've created a skill that explains how to test local web applications using Playwright and Python. And now I'm going to go ahead and ask the agent exactly that. How do I test local web applications using Playwright in Python? And the response you're seeing is driven by that skill, which includes step-by-step -step approach that I specified in the skill itself. This makes it easy to package up expertise once and reuse it across conversations and agents. 
And we've even improved our website with fast client-side search that allows you to easily and quickly navigate across our documentation. So check out our release notes for even more features that came out. So those are some of my favorite features, but what are yours? Go ahead and mention them in the comments. And also check out this video here.